What's up everybody? I'm bringing you another one of these trip breakdown videos. This one is gonna be from my recent trip to Zion National Park. I'm gonna be giving you seven tips for planning your next photography trip out there, places to stay, locations to shoot, what time you should get there, all that good stuff. So let's jump right into it. All right, so as far as your options for places to stay, if you look online, you'll see there's a bunch of lodges, hotels kind of in the Zion National Park area. However, those prices from what I saw and from when I was there, they're in the $100 to $200 range. If you're a budget traveler, if you travel a lot, it might not work out for you. Um, I would suggest going with the cheaper option. So I usually stay at a hostel. Looking around the area, there wasn't actually many hostels nearby. The closest one actually was in a small town called Kanab, which was about 45 minutes, one hour away from the park. So not too bad. Um, it might add to your sunrise wake up time, but for I think 30 bucks, 25, it was either 25 or $35 per night. Uh, you really can't beat that price. Moving on to the next tip, uh, we have a lot of locations to shoot in Zion. There are canyons, there's vistas, there's every kind of landscape imaginable as far as deserts go. Your first spot is gonna be the most convenient, easy to reach, and probably most well-known location, and it's called Junction Bridge. Junction Bridge is pretty easy to get to. You drive into the park, you pay, you enter, you make a right turn, You'll see a small bridge. There's two small parking lots nearby. It fills up quickly, so definitely get there early. But as soon as you walk onto the bridge, you can look down the river and you'll see uh, the line of mountains over there at the end. Depending what time of the year, the sun will hit it as it goes down. If you're lucky, you might get some clouds doing some cool colors. I personally wasn't that lucky in my trip. I just got a little bit of color on the mountains, but it's definitely a shot worth getting. You can set up time lapses long exposures, and as you can see on this clip, it gets fully lined up with people, and you kinda wanna get in the middle so you have that leading line of the river going up to the uh, Watchman Mountains in the back. The next location is called Canyon Overlook. If you continue up the road, the main road that goes through Zion, or if you're coming back from the other way, it's about halfway um, up through all the turns, right after the tunnel if you're going up the mountain, right before the tunnel if you're coming down. Best time to get there is sunrise. One thing I noticed though is I usually try to arrive an hour early to whatever location I'm trying to get to, but since it's a canyon and since most of the locations in Zion are canyons, one thing you'll notice is you won't have to get there that early because the sun won't peak over the canyon until probably an hour, half an hour after actual sunrise so there's not really any point in waking up that early to get down there i would get down there half hour early at most it's going to be pitch black anyways so bring your headlamp bring a flashlight you're going to be walking up some steep trails on the edge of the cliff uh, with some steep drops so definitely bring some way to light your uh, path it's supposedly a 45 minute hike um, i did it in about 20 15 minutes um, I don't see why most places tell you it's 45, but it's actually very quick to get over there. Some cool perspectives are, of course, the canyon overlook view. There's a small fence. You get cars zigzagging the winding road, and as the sun comes up, you can get some cool light trails. If you stack some long exposures like I did, you can get a continuous line. Also, don't forget that the sun is gonna be rising behind you and lighting up the valley, so you might wanna get some shots facing the opposite direction. I got some cool ones with a tree, and as the sun rises, you'll see the light come down and light up the canyon. Um, cool place to set up a time lapse and get that whole thing going. Next, we have Kolob Terrace Road. Kolob Terrace Road, you actually leave Zion National Park, you drive down the main road, and you make a turn on Kolob Terrace Road and it goes winding up to a location called the Reservoir. On the way up there, you run into a variety of landscapes and the park actually starts a little bit into the road. So there are certain sections that are technically not part of Zion National Park, but you still get similar landscapes. In this location are also what they call the hoodoos, these rock structures that are also in Bryce Canyon and they are shaped by wind over time, some kind of erosion thing. They are cool for uh, astrophotography foreground elements. Unfortunately, I did not arrive there in time to scout out the location of these, so I can't exactly tell you where they are, but they're there. I looked for them in the dark, I didn't find them. That's another tip I should add on there. Make sure to scout your locations during the daylight so you're not stomping around in the dark and you might fall off a cliff and uh, nobody will ever find you again. 
two honorable mentions that are worth visiting if you're in the area, not exactly part of Zion National Park, but they are close by. The first is Grafton Ghost Town. You basically take the main road leaving the park through Springdale and you make a left turn on Bridge Road, named because there's a small bridge there, and you follow that all the way down, make a right and you'll find, it's about four buildings, I don't know which ones are exactly part of the original town because there's a small farm there, but there's a fence, you can walk right through, you got your two main buildings, it's pretty good for setting up long exposure shots if you got the clouds moving in the right direction. Also a good sunset location, the sun will be setting off to the building on the right, so you can set up a composition right there. And additionally, you can use it as an astrophotography foreground element, depending on which way the Milky Way is that time of year when you're there, you just kind of line up the shots. I actually arrived there a little too close to sunrise and the Milky Way was actually fading away. You know, I missed it by a few hours because I was hanging out in uh, Kolob Terrace Road looking for the hoodoos and I actually got a cool shot out there. I'll show you real quick. The next honorable mention is actually a separate park altogether, Bryce Canyon National Park, but it is about an hour and a half, two hour drive north. You go up 89 and you make a right on uh, 12, Highway 12. I'm not sure what they're called, but, and you could actually spend several days checking out that whole park in itself. I went up there pretty much just to check out the large main vista at Sunset Point. From what I researched, it's actually better to go there for sunrise because there is a separate spot called Sunrise Point, but at Sunset Point, you get the entire canyon and you get all the hoodoos lined up in front of you. At sunrise point, you're pretty much getting the sun and a few of the mountains in the distance. And I just don't think it's that good of a composition. It's kind of tricky to get a proper composition there regardless because you don't really get any foreground elements. So I definitely recommend bringing a telephoto lens and you can get a few close-ups of the light hitting the hoodoos. I actually got a couple time lapses. It's cool when the sun peeks over the edge and lights up, starts lighting up the individual hoodoos and just an overall great view. Another tip up there is to bring some warm clothes because even though it was summer when I was there and Zion was blazing hot, uh, being at Bryce Canyon and sunrise, probably due to the elevation and the wind, it was actually really cold and I was pretty unprepared. I had my beanie, put on a couple t-shirts and it wasn't the most comfortable sunrise, but it was definitely worth it for the shot. My final tip is of course, probably the most well-known location in Zion National Park, the Narrows. There's a lot to be said about the Narrows because it's a hike that is entirely in the water and there are so many factors that will uh, affect your experience there. If there's heavy rain, the river will flood and they actually will not allow people or recommend people not to go because you're gonna be in waist to overhead high water, which is what they told me on the first day that I was thinking about going. To get to the Narrows, you park and leave your car at the visitor center, and you actually have to take the train up through a floor of the valley road because private vehicles aren't allowed. Um, I think if you're staying at the lodge up there, they let you, but of course, that's about 200 to $400 a night, I believe. So yeah, just take the free train. It's the last stop. There's a short walk and then you get to the beginning of the river. When I was there, it was about knee high um, in most areas. Some recommendations as far as navigating is bring your tripod, of course, and use it as a walking stick. I think you can rent boots and a walking stick at one of the uh, locations in the park. Um, not sure what the prices are because I had my own waterproof boots, but I uh, used my tripod as a walking stick, definitely needed it because you're wading around in water and you're not sure if there's slippery rocks underneath and you don't want to stumble and fall over with, I don't know, I had like 50 pounds, a few thousand dollars worth of equipment in my bag, wasn't going to risk it. The main thing about shooting photos in the Narrows is you're basically chasing the light. Um, since it's a very steep, deep canyon, the sun will be in different positions depending on what part of the canyon you are, depending what time of day. So you're basically looking at where can you get the composition, the shadows, the light, the reflection off some of the walls. There aren't really any iconic locations there. You basically use what you see. There are trees, sometimes rocks, depending on the water level. Leading lines can be made with the shadow. I got some cool V shapes. Here's one of the shots that I got. Um, a few time lapses. One of my recommendations is definitely to get there early. You can pretty much make a day out of it if you're trying to reach the end of the Narrows. I only made it to the main junction area. I was told if you take a right, there's some cool 
waterfalls and, and cool things that they don't have on the left side when you reach that fork. Unfortunately, I didn't bring a dry bag. So definitely, if you're planning on hiking the whole Narrows, bring some plastic bags. You can buy a proper dry bag for your camera gear. I don't know if I would buy one just for the one trip, but I think you can get away with some plastic bags and be aware that you might be going in water that's chest deep, um, like the part that stopped me. And if you got your gear in a bag, it's up to your own risk tolerance, but you might be able to uh, kind of make it out there and explore. Um, definitely a cool spot. So that wraps it up. Seven tips for you if you are visiting Zion National Park. I strongly recommend it. I was only there for three days, but I definitely got a cool video out of it. A bunch of time lapses and a lot of photos. I'll put all the links either on the video or in the description below, and I will catch you guys on the next trip breakdown.